Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Chef's Talking Chop. I'm here again for my second time with uh, Chef Justin McCarr. Thanks for having me, man. Nice to have you back. Uh, Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Pleasure. So, uh, could you kind of let us all know here what you got going down for us? Yeah, we had a great time chatting last time. Now we're doing a little cooking. Uh, braised boneless beef short ribs. It's a okay. mouthful. Yeah. Burgundy braised boneless beef short ribs. Short ribs are a ton of fun to cook. They're really easy. They can be intimidating. Braising at home can be like, it takes three hours. Well, how do I do it? Yeah. The proper procedure to set up, uh, you put it in the oven for three hours, you pull it out, you're, you're done. You're ready to eat. It's like a pressure cooker or, or okay. uh, the crock pots. Yeah. It's, it's basically crock pot cooking. It's all about the, the initial preparation and getting all the flavors in there so it's sitting in that pot doing its thing. Okay. And all the flavors leach out and meld together. Yeah. So we're starting off with, actually we get this cool burner. Um, this is an induction burner, not an open flame burner. It's electric. It operates on mag magnetics. So okay. you need a certain pan, usually an all tight or a thick bottom pan. Yeah. And the cool thing about these, you can in your house, you can have them outside, inside. There's no flame, so you don't need a, a hood system like in a professional situation. Yeah. But you take the pan off, and this thing shuts off. You can see that's that's it's pretty hot. Pretty hot. Yeah. Within 15 or 20 seconds, you can put your hand on there. Oh, back it, in. It, it cools off just like that. Okay. The pan stays hot because it's got you know it's got some mass. <laughs> but you put it back on within. 30 seconds. This pan is smoking hot. You can't do that with a gas range, electric range. Okay. This induction burner technology is really cool. Yeah. I mean, and they make them big, small. This is a little more of a professional version. Okay. But I've got one at home in the summertime. Cooking something at home, you don't light up the, the gas burner in the kitchen. You do this thing, and everything cooks super fast. You don't heat up your house. Okay. Especially, you know, being in pasta in the summer. Yeah. You can get the last thing you want to do. Or yeah. you get an extension cord, you plug it in outside. You cook right outside next to the Next to the barbie. Yeah, good addition to your Kinda barbecue cool. kit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's got to have something to do with the the displacement of the heat, right? Because the heat's evenly displaced on this guy. Yeah, yeah. As, uh, big, as, as big as your pot is, the heat's right there. Like okay. with a flame, you get a concentrated heat sometimes in a, yeah. in a certain spot. And electric burners are the worst. Um, this electric induction, cool stuff. Okay. And you can get a good one at home for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Around. The, the price come way down. Okay. And you can take it out, just like you said. It's so so versatile. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like we're saying. Going camping, you get an induction or an in inverter in your car, you can plug an induction up in <laughs> yeah. your inverter and you can have some bang. Somebody on real duty. Or well saute duty. Hopefully we'll have them all making uh, some short ribs out there though. Well short ribs on the on a camping trip. A little, little challenge, you gotta bring the crock crock pot. Yeah, just do the manifold, the manifold <laughs> yeah. cooking. <laughs> I can see it. So then the next most important thing, actually the, the star of the show is the the, the chuck brisket. Uh, boneless beef short ribs. You can get bone in short ribs. Same thing. The cool thing about short ribs is they got a lot of fat. Okay. Um, you can see all this fat on here. That marbling, marbling on meat means fat content. Content means flavor. So the more fat you have, this way, prime rib, a lot more fat content than a filet mignon. Yeah, therefore, it eats more buttery. It's more just succulent in the mouthfeel. Tenderloin, don't get me wrong, is a great kind of meat, but it, side by side, huge difference. So, these little streaks of fat in here is what makes a, a, a really good, especially really good braising meat, because you need the fat content as it's cooking to help keep everything moisturized. Yeah, so that all kind of leaches out, right? Right. That yeah, fat becomes one think. with the sauce. Yeah. So, these big chunks of fat here, that's just going to melt like butter, become part of the sauce. Fat, fat is flavor. And to extract flavor, you need the simplest of things. Salt and pepper. And for these guys, especially if you get them cut thick like this, almost too much salt is not enough. When you sear it in the pan, some of that salt is going to come off and yeah. into the oil. The salt helps the proteins turn to sugars, which makes a crust. That's called caramelizing. So caramelizing is what gets sweetness and intense flavor out of meat. So. Pepper, a lot of people say pepper afterwards. I do a little pepper before and after. Both sides. And again, just, you can see that's, that looks like a lot of salt. Thick cut of meat like that and three hours of cooking, that salt just gonna become, become background. It's gonna help with the umami of the whole dish. Yeah, and then searing, right, like if, 
I understand it correctly, kind of helps retain some of the juices that are in there. Right. Right? Yeah, especially if you're going for a, a steak, oh, medium rare, like a filet or, or a ribeye, you get that sear on the outside, the juices can't, can't escape. So then when you slice into it, all that fat is retained inside. With this, we're doing for more sugars, and, and the fat's going to leach out because of the slow, amount of, the slow cooking time. But we're going for the maximum flavor on the outside of the meat. Let's see if this guy's performing. So the searing is the next most important thing. Little blend. This is about 20% olive oil and the rest canola. You want to not have all olive oil because of the smoking point. Smoking point of a blend is you can approach about 400 degrees, 3, 380. Straight olive oil is about 280. Yeah. Much too low, so you're going to end up with, with a burnt oil flavor. Yeah. Now you get a little olive oil flavor, but you get that high temp smoking point. Get hot, and the whole trick is the sear. You want to hear? I hope it. I hope it does it. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you're not hearing that, something's yeah. not going right. Yeah. You want to. You want to be talking to you. Almost kind of angry talking to you. And once you put it in the oil, don't move it. Give it five minutes. Get a nice, nice dark, dark brown crust. You don't want a light brown. You want it like a dark roast coffee almost. Uh, that's again bring out the sugars, the proteins, and really accentuating the flavors of the meat. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny how you said you want it talking to you because I don't remember if it was you or if it's our mutual friend Garrett, but somebody when I first started, like, if you listen, the food will talk to you, and I've been repeating yeah. that for for years. Yeah. Uh, well, especially on, on on the line. Yeah. In the in the restaurant situation when we're really busy. You hear something sizzling behind you, that means there's one Something's of happening. Bit. Yeah, something's, uh -oh. something's <laughs> going, happening. Hey, help me out. But definitely for this for the searing. And uh, it should be bobbling and a little more a little more angry, but it's gonna do its thing. Okay. And you kinda wanna set it and almost set forget it. it. You don't wanna really move it. Set it and forget it, yeah. Okay. The more you move it, the, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna disrupt that whole process. So give it five minutes. You'll hear it. Like I said, it's talking to you. You can do some other stuff, you can cut up your mirror pod which we can talk about right now. Yeah. Um, you can go grab yourself a glass of wine. Just let it, let it hang out, flip cool. it over, same thing. So the, the other ingredients in this dish, mirepoix, carrots, onion, celery, a little tomato just for a little more a little more backbone, a little acidity. I love garlic, so. Oh yeah. We're gonna put a lot of garlic in here. Okay. Probably 15 or 20 cloves for these guys. This is enough for, for two. Um, and then I've got a, a bay leaf, fresh bay. So fresh bay compared to a dry bay leaf? No comparison. Especially okay. with um especially with, with steak. Fresh bay. Just you, you crush it once. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually that just released so much, you know, fragrance. Yeah. And it's, it is it's this has this has a the flavor of three or four dry leaves. Okay. But it's got that that sweet pungency that yeah. you just can't get from dry leaves. So a couple of these, this is even in the morning, um, just crush it to release those flavors, a little bit of ginger and some lemon and honey. Okay. And it makes it kill the heat. Yeah. This, this fresh bay is really cool, and it grows actually all around here. The California Bay and Bay Laurel. The California Bay, when you crush it, it really knocks your head back. Okay. I was just uh, actually a guest who came to him. I thought it was just Bay Laurel. So there's a California Bay. So Bay Laurel is a little softer, a little more friendly. Okay. The California Bay, and you can tell that it really fits you. Yeah. And this so California Bay, I've seen it where. Yeah. Well, no, California. this is Bay Laurel. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was even stronger. Yeah. Even yeah. yeah, even more potent than this one. I hope it's still got that 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 hint of sweetness, like you were saying. The the, um, the California one is a little more, more spice, more fire to it. Okay. Yeah. And this has that just those floral nuances. Yeah. Man, it, gets, it makes a great morning tea. Okay. Pretty cool. Yeah, I can. I can imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. But it lends itself really good to, to anything, any beef dish. I put it in with, with the meatballs. Okay. We do a meatball here. I just put it in with, with the meatballs, chicken broth. It's a little bit different. I just perfume the chicken stock. Yeah. You just you know leave it floating in there, and when it comes to the table, you can smell. It. You're like, what? What is that? And it just adds nice little nuance. Nice. You tell the meat's getting ready when it when it's not stuck to the pan. Okay, like it, it'll naturally it lift itself. off. Yeah. And you can see the edges starting to curl up a little bit. And then... Uh, the 
bummer there. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. That's pretty sexy. Nice. There's that sound effect right there. Yeah. Talking. So anyway, bay leaf, miracle, tomatoes, garlic, um, rosemary, thyme, and then I like to add a little bit of juniper berry, a little star anise, okay. and a squeeze of, of uh, orange. So that's that's part of the backbone, and then chicken stock and red wine. That's what makes the, the broth. Okay. Because the big part of braised short ribs is you have this great broth and you're done. Um, most of the mirepoix is, is discarded afterwards, but the carrots, man, when these guys cook for like three hours in all this, this beefy, flavorful goodness, these are like as good as the meat. Yeah, those are one of the pork tender. Yep. The, the meat comes out, you know, butter soft, and, and these guys, and you're like, yeah, but it's got a little different flavor than the, than the steak. Obviously, but they come out great. Yeah, so a lot of the other everything else goes bye bye. Okay, that's why these are cut so huge. So they don't have to disintegrate in three hours of cooking. Once it kind of holds together, yeah. So when it's all done, you can fish them out. So soak up that flavor. It's got a nice root vegetable. It's got a lot. Yeah, uh, some substance. texture. Two Par- parsnips. There you go. Parsnips also work really well. Okay. To do some parsnips and carrots. Parsnips have a little more sweetness. It'll change the flavor of the whole dish, but again, it's open for interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, mushrooms are a little more, more earthiness and more dirt. Let's have fun with it. So, we will. A little, little braising pan. Okay. Not what we use at the restaurant all the time, but good, good for home use. Yeah, I can imagine you get a hundred portions out of that. <laughs> so, put those in there. And then to the side of my pan. You want to brown the mirror pot also. Okay. Again, just building the layer of paper. Not fun that down. You use this to say the same concept. You're getting the sweetness out of the vegetable. To add more layers of flavor to the base. Okay. And same same thing, you let these guys go for till till it's golden brown. You can give them a little salt and pepper, but remember the salt and pepper still in the pan to cook the steak. You don't want to overdo it. You can always add more afterwards, you can't take it out. Salt's crucial for getting the protein caramelized on the food. So yeah. Salt those guys heavy. Don't worry about this too much. Okay. You need a lot of flavor. And even at home, you can use the same pan. Same pan right there. Straight into it. Yeah, you want to use the same pan because all that, that goodness from the, the beef is stuck in the bottom of the pan. Right. Um, now you're just getting that on your head. And I like to literally Excuse them, fresh herbs. Okay. I almost can't too much. Too, too much. Rose, rosemary is a little bit Rosemary times this whole. Just throw those guys straight in there. Look at that. Stick it right, right between them. So they're okay. both getting some of the flavor. And then same with the, the spices. Star anise. Yeah, again, just adds another different layer of depth and flavor to the whole dish. So a couple of star anise, some juniper, and a couple of these delicious bay leaves. One right on top of each piece of steak. Get me down on that one. And then and the orange juice kind of just something unique, unexpected. It's not a major component of the dish, but it really adds to those, the, the layering, the flavors. Okay. A little bit of sugar helps balance balance everything and balance. Yeah, yeah. Again, building layers of flavor, that's, that's kind of key. The vegetable's got good sound. That steering sound, you never know. Really? Talking to us. So let's let these guys get, again, just keep cooking for a while. Don't disturb them too much. Let it go, let it go. To expedite things. We get to the uh, the wine part. We should usually when cooking have a wine glass in hand also. Okay. <laughs> We're back in here. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For next time. Um, and you can use a, a, a beef stock, a chicken stock, a vegetable stock. I have some really, really powerful chicken stock and wine. Lots of wine. The acidity of the wine cuts the fat of the meat. Okay. So when you guys are all really brown, we jump in here a little bit. Don't be shy with the wine. Because that's doing more than just deglazing the pan. That's part of the sauce, as you just mentioned. Right. Yeah, that's that's a it's almost almost a 50-50 wine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then it does, it deglazes the pan, gets all those flavors out of the bottom. And you want enough stock to 
to definitely cover the meat by about a half half to an, to an inch of liquid. Okay. Because it's going to be production as it cooks. Yeah. Over three hours. Bring us to a boil. Put it right on top of our meat. Ooh, that smells delicious. That wine. Yeah, and, that's and the good. chicken and everything and those vegetables. It's gonna heat up the herbs in there too. Okay. And all and that then, uh, You want a, you want a good piping lid. This one fits really good. If you don't have a lid like that, uh, a little parchment and aluminum foil. Okay. Crimped all the way around. About a 275 degree oven, two and a half to three hours. Yeah. From this point on, you cannot mess it up. You really almost can't overcook it. Yeah. Put it in the oven, forget about it, go about the rest of the day, okay. and then think about what you're going to serve it with. Mashed potatoes and polenta. Um, I've got a little uh, Eto pasta, some Eto trombe pasta okay. from Templeton's Eto Pasta Company. Nice. Huge fan. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> I dig it. So I'll, I'll bring that out and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, present it. Okay. What are we doing here in Pedro Loretta? So, just a quick recap, once they get this cooking done, which is literally took us maybe 15 minutes, they just throw this in the oven and pretty much that's... That's it. That's yeah. it? Yeah, we were, we were chatting. We could have... Okay. You could have the steak cooking, cutting up your vegetables. Yeah. Man, this, this process, once once you're used to it... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like second nature. And braising such a, a great tool to have yeah. in, your, in your bag. Of, and you can do it with, with beef. You can do it with chicken. You just don't do it as long. Um, Sausages, yeah. rocks. Nice Again, we don't cook it as long. Braising is uh, intimidating. How do I do it? How long does it take? Yeah. A couple simple steps, get the flavor going, and you can't mess it up. Cool. Yeah. So let's. Uh, we'll clean up this mess. We'll create another mess. That sounds good. All right. Groovy. As seen on TV. Yeah. It are, it are we'll, cool. we'll take this one. <laughs> As seen on TV, the finished part is ta-da! Beautiful shorty. Two and a half carrots in there. Two and a half hours of cooking. So, I already moved the, removed the other mirepoix, but it's got the uh, the carrots like I mentioned, and we just we fish out the the roasted garlic, basically okay. smush it on the meat because the garlic's really good too. Oh yeah, like garlic confit in there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, on the right, we're serving it with uh, it's a sort of stroganoff style. Okay. It's properly pasta, fermento, uh, cremini, and, and oyster mushrooms. And a little marcella cream sauce. Okay. Pretty pretty light, pretty delicate. Because this meat has a lot of a lot of cojones, a lot of backbone. And you can tell it's done when you basically take your spoon and cut right through it. Okay. Just like that, and, and all that fat that was on there, see, it's, it's, this is a solid, beautiful chunk of meat. All that fat that was on the edge is just rendered off. Yeah. It becomes part of the sauce. Then, take a little bit of the beautiful sauce. Yeah, that three hours to make. Yep. All and again, all I did was, was uh, just basically fish the meat and the carrots out of the broth and then strain the broth. Okay. And that's it. And then for a finisher, Again, it's, it's rich. You got a cream sauce. You got a lot of the fat from the, the shorties, the shorties, the short ribs. It's not shorties. Shorties for short. Shorties. <laughs> it's a lot of intense flavors. So okay. a little, this is a super simple gremolata. Meyer lemon zest, oh, green onion, really? and parsley leaf. Okay. It's almost a little salad, but it really, it really brightens everything up with each bite. Um, I've always had a food philosophy of playing with your food. Mm -hmm. And so if... This is delicious on its own. You have three bites of the steak and the pasta, and it gets really heavy. Yeah. You're all of a sudden, your palate is kind of like going, oh, I'm tired. So you have a swig of wine, have a few more bites. It's like your palate's going, it's just too coated. There's too much protein, too much fat. This little salad yeah. gives you a little crunch, a little herb, a little zing of the onion, a little lemon zest, Okay. and it brightens up your palate. So again, playing with your food, every, every bite can be different from the first bite. Okay. You've got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you keep mixing it up. So acidity, the, the fresh herbs, the crunch of the herbs, and then we got these cool, just they're just uh, basically a, a confit cherry tomato. Cooked really slow in some olive oil, liver basil, bring in some, some acidity, some brightness. Yeah. To lighten up 
your palate as you as you go okay. through the meal. Nothing worse, and, and especially with risotto, it's a great example. Risotto is cheese and butter, starchy rice. And you get a few bites in, it's really good, and then you're like, ah, oh, yeah. done. But I always do a salad with a really bright vinaigrette with a risotto. Okay. You grab a little crunch Pears. and you mix it in. Yeah, yeah. You, you get some crunch, your palate's clean. You just want to keep eating more. Okay. Yeah. So all, everything, everything here plays a, a crucial role. You kind of... The, yeah. I just try to blank There's a little, a little of thought behind everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's intentional. Okay. Yeah. You want to try some? Oh, yeah. Of course. Let's do it. Just snap a quick pick and then... This is my lunch too, so I'm definitely ready. <laughs> yeah, you've been waiting. <laughs> I'm in. Do we have silverware for me? Right there. Okay, cool. Napkin too. You're going to need it. Professional style. Oh, fork, fork tender. Oh, that got to be right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It's good the day after, the day after, and the day after. Okay, cheers. Well, cheers. <laughs> Dig it. Okay. They're good. <laughs> and it's one of those set it and forget it type of things? Yeah. And left for leftovers, phenomenal. Uh, make a sandwich out of it. The day after, you cool it off in the broth. Okay. Sets up and gets firm. Heat it up in the broth again. Make a sandwich out of it. A little, you know, some, some, some good, not too crusty bread, but some good bread. A little cheese, a little Dijon for some of that brightness. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, man. And that carrot. The carrot's the way to go, huh? A little bit of that carrot. It's almost better than the beef. <laughs> you can't have one without the other. So you can't do just braised carrots and get that flavor. Yeah. You can't do just braised beef and get that flavor. So together. Yeah. They're it's good buddies. Not your dad's pot roast. <laughs> yeah. There's that soaks up all the beef. You get the hint of wine in there. Mm -hmm. Like the, that carrot. Those carrots are phenomenal. Yeah. And then part of that caramelizing in the pan too. Getting all that flavor. You get a little. We didn't do it quite as long as we should, but you get that little bit of brownness in the carrot. Just, just sweetness. Sweetness okay. and flavor. Cool, man. Well. Do we have anything else that we want to add about about the shorties or left short drink good wine? I, I dig it. <laughs> Thanks, so, man. Thank um, you. Do we have anything that where people can find you? Do we? Yeah. Um, I mean, Allegretto and Cello are, are all over the website, the internet. Um, Allegretto.com, Cello, Robles.com. for Instagram for just my page, uh, Chef Justin Picard. Okay. Um, and that should, that should sum it up. Should, should yeah. people make reservations before they're coming out? I always make reservations. And how should you do that? Website? Easy to make. Uh, website, open table. Okay. Just pick up the phone. Um, we have current menus on our website. I just I just did a huge menu change. So right now we're in uh, January of what, 2020. 20. <laughs> I did yeah. a huge menu change. Trying for, for quarterly or thirdly menu changes since we don't hardly really have four seasons here in Paso. Yeah. But but you know, the third every third of the year a nice menu change. Okay. So I just on old one, lots of fun, lots of fun stuff to check out. Um, the shorties are gonna be on there though, right? Shorties are on right now. Okay. Yeah, that's the menu for this season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys are familiar with, with my history and his history, because we have history. It was the Robert Stable for, forever. The Robert Stable. Yeah. Um, and now it's, it's just better. I've tweaked it and oh, yeah. a little better product. And, yeah, I'm Yeah, dude, it's good. Cool to see things evolve like that. Well, yeah. Thanks, my man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And check again out the way. It's been, a, it's been fun. Let's yeah. do it again. Heck yeah. We'll do a summer show. Always. <laughs> yeah. We can. I mean, this is nice, and and the the herbs on top really brighten it up. But we can do something that's more more light, and lively. Yeah. And hopefully the the weather's permitting, and yeah. we can get another outside show. Yeah. Maybe we'll get a, a, a farmer or two. Yeah. We can we can have them come and we'll cook with some of their ingredients. Have fun with that. Yeah. I mean that that farm to table yep. is super good. Super good for the environment. You know. Yeah. Uh, and and our location on the east side of town. And there's, there's a dozen farmers I buy from. Out this way. Yeah. But the east side is a little more of the farming area. Okay. Um, and the seafood from Morro Bay that I've been getting. Lots of lots of really good fun stuff. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Until until next time, folks.
Come see him. Summertime. Yeah. Come okay. see soon. Book a reservation. Allegretto.com. Cello Paso. Cello Paso Rebels. Com. Okay. Or just look up Allegretto. Instagram. So, wherever good restaurants. Allegretto. A l l e g r e t t o. And I'll put a link to all this. <laughs> you guys don't have to do any of that hard work. Cool. Thanks, Thank you. Pleasure. Get it started. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks, guys, for watching or listening. Uh, I put links to Justin Picard's social media down in the description. Also, links to Allegretto's website so you can place reservations. You'll find their phone number and address down there. Thanks again, guys, for everything. Please, if you like the episode, comment, share with your friends, or subscribe. Peace.